You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1509. Welcome to our monthly horse trailer series, brought to you by Double D Trailers. Find them online at doubledtrailers.com. That's double, the letter D, trailers.com. Glenn here, founder of the Horse Radio Network and host of Horses in the Morning. One of the top requested segments we've gotten from listeners is about trailers and trailer safety. Brad Heath from Double D Trailers has agreed to help us with a five-part series on trailers. Brad is the owner of Double D Trailers with over 25-plus years of experience in the horse trailer manufacturing and equestrian industry. And we had a lot of response on the first episode, and that was the do's and don'ts of trailer hauling. You can find that at horseradionetwork.com slash trailer. Today... In part two, we're talking about trailer configurations and layouts, the, the least controversial thing that we're going to discuss in these five-part series. Brad, as you know, I'm being very sarcastic about that because everybody has opinions, right? So is it straight or slant load? Which is better? Which is more horrible for my horse? Let's talk. Let's get into straight versus slant load trailers. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having us, Glenn. And yeah, just throw me right into the lion's yeah, den right out one. of the gate, won't you? I mean, come on here. So, you know, uh, I have been doing this for a long time, and we've dealt with thousands of clients on many different styles, many different configurations. And we hear from clients, you know, my horse doesn't haul well in a straight load. Uh, I won't, I, you know, I've got to have something different. And then on the flip side, we hear from other clients, you know, I don't like slant loads. My horse doesn't haul well in that. Uh, I can't access the center horse and things of that nature. Um, I'm more of one of these folks who tends not to throw in my opinion on much of anything. That way I don't get into trouble so much. (laughs) And I try to stick with, you know, what I've learned and factual information and feedback from clients over the years. You know, when we're looking at straight loads, I think the first trailer was built back in maybe the 50s and it was two horse bumper pull straight. Uh, the problems that I continue to see with straight loads today, particularly in a two horse, you know, you've got uh, once you get one horse loaded, you have the butt bar to contend with. That's uh, something that can be a hazard. We've actually had some clients get kicked while trying to access one of the horses and fooling around with the butt bar. And then when you're loading horse number two, it's sort of like a hallway effect. You know, if you got one horse in there, you got the other stall. So this guy, you're asking him to load in a smaller space. Now, granted, if you have a side ramp so that, um, you know, your horse doesn't have to back out, which is another thing that I don't particularly like because many horses don't like to do that. So if you had a side ramp, you could make the argument, hey, I can walk the horse on, I can walk the horse off, I can access either horse if I have an issue and, you know, load one or the other. The slant loads were introduced uh, back in the early 80s, I believe, is the history on that. And primarily, I think to pack in more horses in a smaller space and smaller horses too, was their original intention. Uh, We'll hear from clients that say, well, my trainer says I need a straight load. And the science that I read says in a straight load that horses balance themselves on both front, both rear, front, rear, front, rear. So you don't end up uh, unloading the horse with one side that's lame or you know, more fatigued than the other. Whereas in a slant load configuration, you know, they may balance on the front, right and left rear, front, right, left, rear. And so the argument is, is over a many hour period. You know, if you're traveling to a show in a slant, uh, you may unload that horse and they favor one side or the other. So that's sort of the argument there, at least that I have heard from a trainer perspective. When we jump back to the slant load, you know, today, uh, Glenn, we probably do 95 percent slant. And I have clients all over the United States. That surprises me. Yeah. Yeah. We have clients all over the U.S. hauling really expensive breeding horses, uh, mare and foal, show horses. Um, I mean, y- you name it, some, some, some really high dollar uh, animals that you know, clients are transporting. So 
uh, safety is of the utmost importance, both for horse and handler. And a lot of the complaints with slant loads, you know, my horse doesn't like to load in the narrow door uh, with the rear tack. You know, we've solved that issue on some of our designs in a two horse configuration. If it were a slant, um, the argument is, well, I can't access the front horse in an emergency situation. We offer side ramp. So that solves uh, that issue. And then even in a three horse configuration, you know, we can do a side ramp on the front stall. We can do, uh, you can access the back horse from the back doors of the trailer, but for the center horse, how do you get to him? Well, you know, we have solutions on that too. We built a three horse reverse load with a double side ramp and it allows you to access each horse independent from the other. And then uh, other pushback that we hear on slants, you know, I have a 17-2 warm blood, uh, 1,500 plus pounds, and he or she, they're, they're just not going to fit uh, in that configuration, and which is entirely false. Uh, in horse trailers, they're just like pants and shoes and uh, coats and shirts, you know, one size doesn't fit all. And so we simply collect the need of the client. We listen to what they're you know, trying to accomplish. And then from there, we, we make recommendations as to what may or may not work the best. We lay out all the information and we let the client make their own decision. So what's the difference? So talk about the reverse slant and reverse straight. What, what does that mean? Well, you know, I never even heard a reverse of a reverse load. I can't say it until about 10 years ago, a client out of Texas reached out to us. She said, hey, I really like you guys uh, safe tack compartment and I want a reverse load. And I'm like a reverse who? What is that? And so she started explaining the benefits, some independent studies that suggest horses haul with less stress in a rear facing configuration. Uh, I jumped on and really just started to kind of look of what was available in the market. And a lot of manufacturers are already building reverse loads, but they were all littered with uh, safety concerns and safety hazards, either narrow ramps, no place for the handler to escape, no access to the middle horse. I mean, it, it was a laundry list of issues. And so, you know, we put on our thinking caps and set out to solve the uh, concerns associated with reverse loads and actually have a patent on that. So uh, our solution allows you to haul a horse in a forward facing configuration or a rear facing configuration. And that would be in the slant design In a straight configuration. You know, I think well, before uh, you go on, so that they would have a side door to load, then you could load through the side door okay. and unload through the back or you yeah. can load through the back door and unload through the side door. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So on the reverse load in a straight configuration, we typically see that in a two horse, I guess you could, maybe could do a three. I've never built one. Uh, the, what I see that I personally don't like it is the horse's head is sticking right at the back doors of the trailer for one. So if you get rear ended, um, I'm not sure, you know, what the safety aspect, of that would be. And then the other that. problem is on or the construction quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other problem is on the construction design itself. The axles have to be, you know, if it's a two horse bumper pull with a dressing room and you look at the axle placement, uh, where the horse stands, the axles are slid farther forward on a reverse load straight than what they would be on, on a conventional straight load because they're trying to center the majority of the horse's weight over that axle bed. And that's fine. But my concern is, you know, I, I've had clients to haul horses in a box stall configuration. They remove the dividers. And if that weight shifts farther to the back, because their head, their head is designed to be at the back, not their butt. And if you throw all that horse's body weight at the back, you know, I think you could end up with a negative tongue weight there. And that certainly wouldn't be a good situation. So uh, just for those reasons and a couple more, you know, those uh, we recommend against straight loads and reverse loads. And it's just not anything that we will build. Let's talk a little bit about the two plus one. Um, I'm actually seeing, I think, more two plus ones, or maybe I just know people who own them more. Kind of explain that configuration. 
Yeah, so I'm not sure who came up with that. I think I first heard of it, I don't know, maybe early 2000s. I have no idea, but um, two plus one, what does that mean? Are we hauling three horses? What are we doing here? And we offer those. I've built a handful over the years, probably less than 10. It's just not something that we've had a, a tremendous amount of success with. And what I don't like about it, you know, folks... Kind of explain uh, what it is first. Well, two plus one would be you're going to straight load two horses in the back stall. It has a partition, butt bar, chest bar. And then there's a plus one area that's just open. There's not any partitions and typically not any padding. So you could haul a horse up there. Um, sideways almost, right? Sideways yeah. or at a slant. I mean, the horse can do whatever they want if it's in a box stall and they're untethered. My preference is I like to see horses tied and I like to see horses in stall dividers for, you know, bracing and uh, you have to really get on the brakes hard and things like that. And, you know, you have a client with very expensive horses and they're very concerned about the safety. They want the padding, they want the dividers and they want all of this. And then we've just got this one guy standing at the front by himself with no padding, no divider, no anything. And it's like, you know, what, what are we doing here? It's like, uh, this one is not important. Um, so, you know, I, I've had a couple of instances where a client was hauling two horses, a four wheeler, a carriage, uh, it multiple things that she was needing. And that configuration solved all of her needs. So we went with that. So but, what, so what happens there is the two horses are in the back straight load, and then then there's a space for the carriage or whatever uh, to go in front of them. That's right. So in that particular configuration that we built for the client, uh, I don't think we had a dressing room on it, just some doors that would swing open. So what I didn't like about it is on a straight load, the divider has to be moved out of the way if you're going to load a carriage to the back door of the trailer and roll it yeah. to the front, you know? You'd almost have you, just side doors for that door. You got to take the thing apart. And the yeah. side door works, but only if you have a short carriage. I mean, That's you, true. you've got to, yeah, you got to be less than about uh, 90, 80 inches to fit it in sideways. And many of those are longer than that. So finally, the one thing I don't think we've talked about where the wheels are, we've talked about weight, we've talked about all that stuff. The one thing we haven't talked about is height. And we've all been behind trailers where you got that tall thoroughbred in there who's hunched over because he's in this little tiny uh, quarter horse trailer. Is there a general rule for the height? Yeah, it's our, our standard models in an 80 wide, it'll fit up to, you know, 15 two style horse. Those are going to be seven feet, four inches interior clearance. Uh, once we jump up to maybe a 16-1, 16-2 hand guy, you know, we'd like to see 7-6 on the height. And then a huge majority of what we build for a 17 plus size, those are going to be 7-8. And I, I have folks that come to us and they're like, hey, I need an eight foot trailer. And, you know, my comment is like, in, well, in 26 years, um, I don't know that I've ever built an eight foot tall trailer before. <laughs> so, you know, I won't say that seven, eight is the magic number for any horse out there. Cause there's certainly some that are, um, you know, really tall, but majority of the time that seven, eight height will give ample room for a large size horse, as well as enough head room uh, to enter and exit through a side ramp without, you know, smacking their head on top and things like that. Well, that's terrific. A lot of good information here. And I know everybody has their own preference and we probably haven't changed any minds about straight versus slant, but that's okay. As I said, we've had both and we we both have worked fine for us because we were trying to do it within the limitations of our horses in the trailer, right? Trying to be safe. So yeah, you have to do what's safe for you as well. Uh, where can they learn more about Double D and getting a trailer ordered? Yeah, jump on our website at doubledtrailers.com. Uh, you can price out right online. You can do various configurations, select your horse size. So uh, a lot of interactive tools there. Yeah, yours is more interactive than any other I've seen. And what are we looking at? One question we did get since the last uh, part that we did is, what are we looking at lead time if somebody orders a trailer? <laughs> In... Um, uh, post COVID when all that hit 12 to 14 months, but, you know, finally things have 
caught up a little bit and turned back to normal. So we're in about that 90 day window at the moment. Oh, that's not bad at all for a custom trailer. Well, you can find the previous episodes and all the episodes we're going to do, all the segments we're going to do on trailers and trailer safety. You can find them at horseradionetwork.com slash trailer. And don't forget that Double D Trailers has a podcast. What's it called? Uh, Horse Trailer Post Podcast. Check it out. Well, there you have it. Horse Radio Network has thousands of engaging podcasts for horse people, and you can have them sent right to your phone. Just subscribe via your favorite podcast player. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>